All right, welcome to the first episode of Easy Says It. Number one. E- number I one. I know it's the first episode. Number one, dude. We're here with a good friend, badass motherfucking tattoo artist, Shredder on mm-hmm. guitar, and all around America's sweetheart, oh, Josh Vaughn, man. Got like a round of applause. Like, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> What's up, Josh, hey, man? Buddy. How you doing? Doing great, dude. Um, so Josh Vaughn, open, or, uh, Josh Vaughn owns a tattoo shop in Kenosha. What's the name of your shop? Bird of Paradox Studios. Um, yeah, right downtown. Oh, yeah. How long have you been tattooing? It's going on 13 years. 2011. Uh, started up. And, yeah, it just took like a year for me to actually get needle to skin, you know? Yeah. How old, how old were you when you first started tattooing? 25? Yeah. I'd say 25. Damn, really? Mm-hmm. Damn, I got in early. A lot of people around me have. I started at like 14, I think, and then I tattooed for like five years or something before I got my apprenticeship at That's like 19. That's crazy. <laughs> Damn, dude. Yeah, like a lot of people I've been tattooed by, uh, like Jason Vogt. Yeah. Dude, Jose. He's badass. Yeah. yeah. And they've been tattooing for like, I don't know, probably 20 years almost. It's crazy. I, yeah. I think I'm coming up on like 17 now. God damn, I've officially been old. Yeah, I've been tattooing longer than half my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, how did you get into it? Did you just like start on your own or uh, did you get, did you go the uh, apprenticeship route? Kind of, kind of. Um, I started on my own right away. So, I, you know, I, I was getting tattooed. You know, funny story. Um, I was living in Minneapolis, going to the Art Institute and dropped out, you know, after probably seven months. And uh, we joined this band. We were touring. They were all tattooed. Me, I was heavily Christian, so are I was you like, "Fucking shit, me, dude." I wish I were. I was like, <laughs> "Why are you guys wasting your money on tattoos? Like, that's so pointless. That's so stupid, you know." Uh, and we always hang out at Uptown Tattoo, Minneapolis. Yeah. And then I started seeing like our singer Jimmy. He was tattooed like neck to toe, eighteen, nineteen year old, just fucking covered. And I was, I was watching him get tattooed. And I was seeing uh, Nick Scrady actually was tattooed him and just doing an amazing piece. And I was like, "That's like." super artistic mm. so it kind of changed my mind and then i was i got my first tattoo and um how old are you i think i was 19 yeah yeah i got a uh, john 316 in hebrew on my ribs yeah hell yeah shout out to Steen, stone cold steve austin yeah dude <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah uh yeah and then it just kind of like from there i get little tattoos and then eventually just worked up to the bigger things did you do an apprenticeship though yeah kind of i i did I, I signed up with someone, um, and it was it, it was okay. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I paid a lot of money for it. Really? Yeah, and it we became good friends. And um, but then you know life happened. Some things came up. We got kind of we got separated. You know we broke up. And then uh, yeah, I don't know. It was like a six months. I was actually you know quote unquote apprenticing. Yeah, but. I don't know. Let me ask you this, dude, because um, it, I feel like there's a, there's obviously no definitive answer. What do you do? You think that apprenticeships are necessary nowadays? Man, I was just talking about this. I feel like it's not a bad route. It depends on how the apprenticeship's doing. Things are moving away from like that traditional hazing, fucking gatekeepy kind of feel. You know, I see I see pros and cons to both, but I, I think like. Yes, you should work for what you have and what your your knowledge and stuff. Um, but nowadays, like, what's realistic? I mean, we got fucking YouTube. We got everything at our fingertips, man, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I see people that start tattooing two years in. They learn off YouTube. They didn't have a mentor, and they're incredible. Yeah, and then you got some grumpy dude that's been tattooing for 30 years going... Dah, 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 dah. Loyal to the coil, just sucks. like, yeah, <laughs> and he sucks. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the truth of it. It's 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 crazy. Um, yeah. But that's just it. I think, honestly, tattooing has proven to be just like every other industry where you got to play the game. you got to keep up. Yeah. You know? I was I was just talking about this with my apprentice, and uh, I love tattooing, man. You know, I, I told you earlier, I was like, I feel like tattooing, tattooing chose me. Mm. And... Um, the thing I really like about tattooing is it's real. You can't fake it. I mean, there's all this stuff on social media, and I mean, there's people um, like editing their, their stuff, and they're using filters and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, it's all in the skin. Yeah. It's all in the skin. You can't fake it. What's there is there, yeah. Yeah, so it, it, that's really cool. I guess the problem with it is like, 
when people aren't self-aware and they think their shit doesn't stink and they never they never develop. Um, but yeah, that's the thing I like about tattooing is it's it's, it's just real. Everything's real about it. Yeah. Um, the interactions with the clients, um, how you feel, and I, I mean, if tattoo's gonna heal like shit, or it's gonna it's gonna heal properly. That's true, man. I think um, it's a balance too of of uh, y- how you progress, right? Like, b- like you were talking about the people that their shit don't stink, you know, like they're, they're just so ego driven. Yeah. It's easy to slip into that, I think, because when you start tattooing, everybody wants to be your friend. Everybody's like, dude, you know, fucking tattoo me, you know, and it's like, all right. And you got to get over that pressure and that, that initial anxiety. I'm yeah. sure you felt that right yeah. when you start. And so. I don't know. I think there's a balance. There's something to take of that because you need confidence. You got to have a degree of confidence. But if you get too much, yeah. you, you kind of defeat yourself. If someone says you're awesome and your answer isn't, uh, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> or, or thank you. You know, uh, We're bad at taking compliments. <laughs> yeah, right. Or uh, uh, I don't know. Some I, I struggle. I don't say I struggle, but I, I battle with myself sometimes when I see someone post a tattoo and they're like, check out this awesome piece I did, you know, and, this, and they're talking themselves up. And I'm like, well, you kind of you kind of look conceited when you do it. But at the same time, the battle, the other side of me, I'm just like, well, maybe I'm just jealous. Maybe I want some of that confidence. And that is like a good portrayal to have. If people know that you are taking pride in your work, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. So I but, don't know. I mean, I, I feel like if you're just doing good work, you can see that someone's taking pride in it. Um, But it... I feel like sometimes you don't have to take pride in it because everyone else is going to do it for you. That's true. <laughs> yeah, humble yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, just like, I let them do the talking. <laughs> yeah. The shitty part is when they do the talking and it's somebody... Here's my thing, bro. Here's my thing. I've been tattooing so long that like, I used to know every, every person that I tattooed and now I don't remember them unless I see their tattoo. I'm like, oh, you're that guy. Yeah. And for some reason, everyone thinks they got my first tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, bro, Easy did my first tattoo. And then they pull that shit out at a bar. I'm like, bro, put that away. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing, bro? You're trying to fucking... You just said I was awesome, bro. Uh, yeah. Look at them blown out lines, man. But oh, they love dude. it so much, right? They like, they take so much, like, pride in their tattoo that you gave them. But Sometimes that's a problem. Yeah. Sometimes that's a problem, man. That's the weird thing about tattooing. I mean, with tattoo artists, it's already hard because we're artists. We're sensitive in a way. So it, mm. it's, it's hard to handle critiques. But when you're wearing a tattoo and someone's like... Bro, that looks like shit. It's like, no, it doesn't, man. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you go in and like, or a client comes in and they're like, um, they think their tattoos the shit. Like you're doing a cover up, and I'm like, hey, do you want to cover that too? They're like, no, man. Like, no, oh, that's man. I like that. Yeah, I like that, man. I was like, mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, no, yeah, me too. Yeah, cool, man. We'll just put that portrait next to that fucking tribal oh, armband you're rocking, it, dude. Bro. Or how many times does this happen where you you do a tattoo and you're just not 100 percent satisfied, right? But your client's ecstatic, and you're just like. All right. Well, as long as you know, in your head, as long as you're happy, you know, Helps like I sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it's hard. We're our own worst critic, man. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, there's some artists that that can't do that. Yeah. You know, I, there's a lo- I, man. I don't think I've ever been 100 percent happy with a tattoo. Honestly, yeah. There's very few where I'm like actually like, oh yeah, yeah, show them that tattoo. You yeah. know, because sometimes, I mean, you, if you're like me, you go home when you're done working for the day and Maybe like in the in the moment you got you know tunnel vision you're you're like all right this is going cool this is great you know and you take the picture at the end of the day and like you you know wrap them up send them home I go home and I'll zoom in and I'll just like zoom in and then zoom and then it's just picking it apart and then I'm like I'm not posting this shit no Dude, fuck that I have this weird thing where uh, I used to post everything and then. I just really started getting on myself about stuff. And I have so many photos of tattoos in my phone and I don't like them until a couple months later. Yeah. I'll go through them and be like, ah, that was actually pretty cool. I should post this. That's good though. Cause yeah. now you got a bank of them, right? Yeah. And I got a bank of uh, messages from people like, why didn't you post my tattoo? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, damn, I know. I got a few like that that hound me every time I see them. Uh, like you need to post my my tattoo, you know. It's like, oh man, I got people asking like, did you you know put together the video that you made of my tattoo yet? I'm like, I didn't put together a video. I'm sorry, I just I, I didn't do that, you know. But yeah, no, it, the clients clients are weird, man. Clients are weird. There's a, all walks of life. 
it's crazy, man. We think we're crazy, and then we're like, that motherfucker's crazy, dude. Yeah, it becomes a therapy session half the time, right? It does, man. Sometimes for me, too. Like, I'll be, like, just spouting off, and I'm like, maybe I'm saying too much. <laughs> Let's tone it back. Yeah, it was funny. I was doing a, I was doing a podcast, and uh, this dude, he asked me uh, about the negatives of tattooing, and I go, the worst part about tattooing is the clients. <laughs> I love it. I was like, but the clients are the worst part about it. <laughs> they can be. Yeah. Yeah, they can be. I was like, oh. Sh- shut up, dude. I'm just trying to tattoo. I just want to tattoo you, bro. <laughs> so, okay, what's your thoughts on uh, wearing headphones while you tattoo? It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Especially if, if you know you're working on someone that talks too much. Right. But I don't know. Sometimes it's just nice to zone out. But I, I, watch, a, I watch a lot of like podcasts and stuff, so I like doing that. Um, unfortunately, most of the stuff I watch is like funny. So if you're working on somebody's stomach, they're like, I'm like, bro, chill out. Yeah. He's like, bro, why'd you have to put this on, bro? Yeah, right. Like, All right, man, we'll shut Shane Gillis off. <laughs> put some Oppenheimer on or something. Yeah, yeah. fucking clients, dude. Uh, <laughs> this is a, this is funny because this is something that everybody, uh, clients always ask, and I mean, there's no answer for it. What's an acceptable tip? <laughs> hate that fucking question yeah no god shit. damn it like come on <laughs> next time i have a waiter i'm gonna ask them what's in it well they're that's 20 percent. they already know the answer yeah Us? i don't know dude like i feel like there's different brackets of tattooers there's some that are like walk-in artists that do 50 dollar tat not not anymore 150 dollar tattoos right like and bang them out bang them out you tip them good you should tip yeah. them you know tip them good you know you get clients that are doing full day sessions for fucking two grand what do you tip some you're already spending two grand like I don't know. 25%, bro. <laughs> 25%. Cash in hand, you know. No, I, I don't know. I, I honestly, I'll humble myself in those moments because it doesn't happen often. And I'll just say, I don't really expect a tip. You know, I, I'll say the same thing I just said. Like, you're already spending a ton of money on the session. Like, you know, I don't, I don't know how to answer that. I'll tell them. Yeah. It's weird because, you know, I see a lot of artists that, I mean, I get it. You know, in America, tipping's huge. You know, they don't do that in other countries. You know, it's all built mm. into their wages. Like in Europe, it's, it's weird if you tip. Wow. Um, yeah, it's just built in their, their wages. And um, there's artists that complain. They're like, well, they didn't tip, they didn't tip. And I get it, you know, it, it'd be nice. But I always say, like, if you're that worried about it, just charge more. Charge more. Don't depend on your tips. Yeah. You know, if that's what it comes down to. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big tipper. I love tipping. Yeah. I mean, you know, washing hands is it's the American way, man. Mm. That's how we do it. Tip a motherfucker. Why do you think everybody's getting an office? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's uh what are your pet peeves with clients? What do you what what bothers you when you're tattooing somebody and you're like, this motherfucker? Oh, that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. There's probably several things. I think for one, when you have to, you know, consistently tell them like, "Hey, sit still," because like people talk and they'll yeah. talk like with their heads, and like that depends where you're tattooing. But like sometimes people just don't understand how much the rest of their body moves when yeah. you know. And it's like, dude, I'm trying to like put this pupil in. Like, <laughs> you, can, it's gonna be cross-eyed if you keep doing this, you know. But I think that's a big one. That's one that kind of, I just, if I have to keep telling you. Don't get the hint, you know? Yeah. I hate when I'm working on somebody's, like, upper shoulder, and they're like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it used to be nice with the coil machines, because then you can just, like, smack them in the cheek. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> smack them in the cheek. Oh, my bad, bro. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'll be, just, I'll be, and, and I just, like, talk shit all the time. So I'm like, there ain't nothing to see here. Ah, <laughs> there, there ain't nothing to see here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's, um, how long have you had your shop? 2019. Uh, February really? 23rd, 2019. Wow, I opened mine at the same time. No shit. Yeah, we got we got approved from the city at this location um, in June 2019, and when we moved from the other shop, I got lucky enough that we never had to miss a day at work. Mm. And I'm like so stoked. It's fucking June, you know. I'm like I just got to get through winter, and then I'm like here we go, tax season. Nope. The world shut down. World shut down, man. Yeah. That yeah. shit sucked. Yeah, it was weird. How'd you how'd you uh, how do you manage that with like tattooing and uh, obviously like having to pay for the shop and everything? And like, did you stop tattooing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did for a while. I stopped. Really? Um, yeah, I tattooed Sam, my wife. You're a good guy. Yeah. No, I, I just felt like um, I needed the break. I was overwhelmed at that point. I, I, I think it was a healthy thing. I tattooed, I want to say I tattooed somebody, but I, I really wasn't 
actively tattooing. Yeah. We got creative. You know, Sam's a photographer, mm -hmm. so she she's super like creative with with thinking outside the box. And so she's like, oh, I'm gonna do these uh, quarantine photo shoots for people. We'll throw that out there, and um, you know, people sit on their stoop or their their steps in front of their house, and I'll stay on the sidewalk because you had to stay away, you know. And and I'll take their photos, and this would be because everybody's gonna remember this moment. Right yeah. or this time period, so she yeah she did that and that brought in money. I was like, dude, people are eating this shit up. It's awesome. Um, I did paintings. That's what I did. I yeah. spent that time. I painted a lot. That's cool. And went out. We were out in the woods all the fucking time. That's cool. It's hard for me to paint, man. I always want to get into painting. Mm. The problem is, is like with my style, it's like more realistic. So oil paintings, I guess the route that that I would have to go, mm. and I can't ever finish one. Well, I got a bunch of started paintings <laughs> that's what they say they say uh good art is never finished it's abandoned right yeah you gotta like you chip away at it and then you'll never be happy and you know you just gotta say i'm fucking done you know that's that's why i like tattooing because it's like you you have to finish the piece you gotta be done <laughs> yeah yeah it's not like I'll, pi I'll, I'll pick it back up on this tomorrow oh man sometimes i'm bad with that too though like i like i don't know uh so many struggles mentally with tattooing dude because i I feel the same way with like painting, and then when I'm tattooing, like we just said, we're never satisfied. So you know, I'm, it to me looks unfinished, but the client's like, "This is amazing," you know. I'm like, "But it's not done. You gotta come back one more session, one okay. more session. Let me get in there." <laughs> like, how much longer do you think? I'm like, five more hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, I can't do it. <laughs> they're like, what? No, man, it's cool the way it is. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> what do you think of that uh, magic ink? You see that stuff? What? Magic ink? What is that? Oh man, okay. I don't know. I just popped in my head right what now. What the fuck is magic um, ink? It's it's just like it sounds. It's uh, a lot of big artists backing it up, dude. So like like um I don't like it because of the name. I know. It's cheesy. It's on Instagram as Magic <laughs> Ink, man. I think uh Stefano uh is part of it. Ryan Ashley is part yeah. of it. And it's it's literally ink that disappears and reappears with a light that they a provided light. Um, so is it basically like a black light ink, or the UV? But it's not black light. It's it's regular ink. And the the examples you see on their Instagram, they're all red. It's all red ink. So like for instance, the first one I saw with a dragon, and then they put this little wand with a light on it that emits like a gold light, and they put it by his mouth, and all of a sudden this fire appeared. You know, That's wild. I'm like it's like a, and then they can turn off. You can you can erase it too. So it's. Like a party trick. We're gonna have to edit this out. I don't want my fucking clients asking for this shit. <laughs> you got that magic ink, bro? You got that, you got that glow in the dark shit? <laughs> All the time, right? You, oh got, you ever my do that? God, bro. <laughs> oh man. You ever use that stuff? The UV? One time. And it was it was actually pretty cool because I never liked it. I never thought it was cool because I'm like, it's a novelty. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can go show that off at the strip club for like a rave or something. Yeah. But uh I went to a uh, I went to Dungeon Dungeon of Doom in what Zion or whatever, mm -hmm. and there's one part of it where it's all black lights, and then they have fluorescent paint, and you wear 3D glasses. So they had a painting, and then they use the fluorescent as like blood. So when you put the glasses on, that's like floating floating above the painting. Oh, that's so, cool. So I did a tattoo, and I did a tattoo of a diamond, and I took the UV. And I made it, I put blood on there dripping. So when you put the 3D glass on under the fluorescent, the fucking blood is like floating. That's crazy. crazy, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I know. You did it just for the Dungeon of Doom? Like, I saw that and I was like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try something like that. I wonder That's if I cool. can replicate that with tattooing. And huh. I mean, it fucking worked. Wow. And <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I never looked at it again like that, but. <laughs> yeah, and that was the only time you used it? Yeah. Yeah. Well. I get, I mean, obviously clients ask for it all the time, but I'm just like, you know, I don't keep I it on when hand. that shit was so sketchy, like when it was first coming out, I think what, what like skin candy was one of the first companies yeah. to do that when they had that, that fucking peppermint on the fucking logo. Oh yeah. <laughs> now it's, now it's like sort of coming back. I've been seeing a little bit of it. And honestly, there's times where I'm like, Hey, that is kind of cool. For yeah. years. I was just like, this is stupid. I don't, I don't see <laughs> like, this is no, not, not the thing. But now I'll see like um, what was it I saw? Maybe like Thor with his hammer, and then the like UV just made the lightning go all around. I was like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Know. In our head, I'm like, I could make that cool, but in general, this is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Totally. So that's cool, man. You've had your shop for a couple of years. What's your? Uh, how many years have you been tattooing again? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Yep. Little teenager. Little teenager tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what's your proudest moment of tattooing so far? Whew. Um, I, honestly, man, I, I'm always really proud and honored to be part of Empire. Yeah, same. You know? Yeah. I, I, and that's honestly, like, yeah. you were a catalyst for that. Um, Stop it. No, okay. Um, no, but tell me more <laughs> <laughs> Milk it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, it, yeah. I mean, I saw, I saw you, were, you were telling me to try go yeah. go for it you know and I was, I was like that's cool that's like the first time i really heard like sponsorship you know like yeah. this, this word uh, now is so glorified i'm sponsored by this sponsored by this you it's know it's weird now because now like you can go on websites and like like peak needles dude they'll sell you a banner say it. they'll sell you a fucking banner your own banner. <laughs> hey, you're sponsored. Here's your discount yeah, code, hey you know? Man. It's weird. I guess that's where we're at with, like, social media and market uh, product placement yeah. and shit like that. It's so weird. You know, I w- there was a point with, like, tattooing. Like, when I got the Empire thing, man, that was so cool. Shout out to Colt Empire Inks, the yeah. whole team, everybody. Absolutely. Based out of Appleton, Wisconsin. Amazing people. We're both Wisconsin artists. I like what Colt does with the, with the company and with, with all the artists and everything. And it's really like a, a community, man. Yeah. It's really cool. Like, there's something about the people that are on the team and the way that they just do stuff and the way that Colt interacts with everybody. And it's like when you go to a convention, you're just like, yo, what's up, man? Yeah, dude. It's really cool. Like it's personable. That. It's really cool. It's like you're a part of something. And Colt really, like, he's a – Empire Inks is – it's huge, man. Dude. It's huge, man. To see them do so well and, like – I mean, maybe I'm just not aware or whatever, but it's just everywhere. I thought it was a cool thing where I'm like, these are cool inks. They're based out of, like, the area I'm mm-hmm. at. There's a lot of people using it, but the product's everywhere now, man. Dude, I, so. Some of the know, baddest motherfuckers are all are on that dudes. team, man. Yeah, dude. I'm like, whoa. That's why I'm like, Michael it's Perry. imposter syndrome, you know? <laughs> like, like it's David Vega, right, in the same room as dude. me for some reason, you know? But oh, I think killers. that's that's cold. I think he doesn't settle any, and he's selective and um, yeah. he's picky. You know, he's a good guy, man. He's really? he's one of the he's just one of the coolest fucking dudes. He does some he does cool art, man. All his paintings are so badass, bro. Dude, I mean, watching him paint is cool. Yeah, you know, and he's so welcoming. Oh, you know, I, I'll I'll talk to him like, yeah, man, I would love. To. He's like, oh, you should come up, you should come up and paint, man. Come up and paint, you know. Yeah, it's dude, like he's so cool. He's like such a good dude. Yeah, man. I know, right? So chill. <laughs> Can I take a minute and gloat? Yeah. Dude, so I don't know if you heard about like the Empire Olympics going on right now. Yes. Yeah. So this morning, I just found out I'm in, I'm in, I'm in going into the, the finals with uh, with dude. Gabe Gabriel Landis drawing really? dead art. Wow. Yeah, he's I I'm I'm happy with silver. I'm gonna take the silver. I'm very happy, dude. The, he's an amazing artist. So. That's sick, dude. I know. I'm man. I'm pretty stoked, man. It was pretty uh, unexpected, but. But yeah, and they but that's that's another testament to them. Like they they do things like this to bring the team together, right? Yeah. Right now they chose eight sponsored artists to do this, but going forward, this is how they're going to do their sponsorships, I guess. That's what Colt was saying, like they're going to have unsponsored artists that want a sponsorship do this whole Olympics thing and then the winner gets it. Yeah. I mean, it's a good thing because it's it's bringing back that that whole thing of just working for something yeah sure. something to really be proud of man mm-hmm. you know i mean yeah you know you can go and fill out applications for sponsorship stuff and you can talk to people but i mean it's a it's a tattoo in company and to sit there and like really have to grind for it yeah you know it's good you prove yourself you know there's a lot of people you can't sponsor everybody if there's not enough room you know we can't all get hooked up with ink awesome fucking ink right and i'll show up at home and there's like a box on my stoop and it's from empire I'm like the fuck man like empire man empire they sent me a, a set and uh before the kid was born they sent me a onesie i remember that picture dude, dude yeah that's so cool that's so sick man and you know that's custom made they don't they just have that in the stock right like they made that for you that like was, that's that was sick man just like it's just family man it's really cool yeah hell yeah what um what do you hope to accomplish with tattooing like do you have any goals that that you're like you you're you should you already have a lot to be proud of right now and, you know, it's like the work's never done. Um, is there anything that you're like, man, but I still want to do this with tattooing? Mm. Like, like what's, yeah. what's your next goal? Like, what's stuff that, you, that still, like, brings you back to that, you know, uh, level of aspiration? I think my, my – it's funny because it's a little counterintuitive because I, I, I kind of want to step back from tattooing, and that's my goal. Not in a sense like stop, 
but mm. not make it a grind. Yeah. I like that we have the studio. I want to open more locations. Ideally, you know, they'd be great. It's passive income and you network and like you're building other artists up because yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know how it is when you get artists under your wing or not even, un- I don't ever consider them under my wing. They're next to me, but they, you know, they improve too. We all feed off each other. And yeah. so if I can keep that going and then tattoo less, you know, so I can focus yeah. more on, on like, enjoying it like we were talking before it's it's kind of becoming a grind you know mm-hmm. we need we need it it's necessary to pay the bills and yeah i don't want it to be like that it's cool when it pays the bills but then when it becomes a job it it feels like a job burnout feels like a job excuse me yeah how uh how do you man cause you got two kids man mm-hmm. how do you and, and i just had i just had mine i'm mm-hmm. learning this how do you find time to to be a dad and then also do your work stuff and then you do music as well? Like, how do you manage all that? I don't know. <laughs> dude. Help me out here, dude. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Um, well, I mean, it, it does come down to having uh, uh, priorities, right? Like, prioritizing what's really important. Is that good? All right, move on to the next thing. Um, I lose track of that sometimes and I have a, an amazing supportive partner wife that mm-hmm. helps me through that, you know, and, and I mean, if it weren't for her, a lot of this, you know, we wouldn't be where we are. I wouldn't yeah. be where I am. It's a team, man. Yeah. You know, you're, you're building a little empire yourself. And, uh, the other answer I have is, uh, sleep less. Uh, <laughs> it sucks. <Check. laughs> sleep less, man. When they, when the family goes to bed, that's when I do music and that's yeah. been, that's been consuming me more than that's anything. Cool. It's the music. It's, I'm the same way with comedy when they're sleeping. I'm, I'm out there doing that stuff. Yeah. It's cool. It's, a, it's like, that's when the art really comes alive is that 11th hour. Why is it? It's like, I'm you a know, night owl, dude. You know what though? Um, I was watching, I was watching Rogan. He had, a a neurologist on there and there's something about that state of being sleepy that makes you creative mm. Mm. i could see that was it huberman no oh, okay no. yeah dude i i could see that though for yeah. sure like when your brain your brain just like it's just reaching for things yeah you know I, if i sit down at like w- one in the afternoon i'm not gonna get shit done i'm gonna pull out the pen i'm gonna write one <laughs> and then i'm gonna go find some shit to <laughs> get do. distracted man yeah, yeah but at night it's like that idea will click it at like midnight, dude. And next thing I know, it's like 5 a.m. And I'm like, I yeah. can't go to bed yet. I need to finish this. You got to finish. And it's, it, then you can go to bed. Because I'm like one of those people where I can't go to bed. I have to fall asleep. Oh, sure. Like I, It's hard for me to just like, okay, it's time for bed. And like lay in bed and close yeah. my eyes. Yeah. I just try to get as high as I fucking can. Get to- Nighttime's good for that for me. I feel like more, f- like if I smoke during the day, I get... Um, I don't know. I, I get like a real big buzz, right? But then I kind of like get tired and slumpy. When I'm smoking at night, right before I go to, go, go to bed and I'll play music and stuff, it's like... A sativa. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, exactly, dude. <laughs> like I'm like a blossoming flower of ideas, you know? Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's cool. So you do music too, man. That's cool. Uh, yeah. How long have you been playing music? You play guitar and drums, right? Um, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a drummer, but I do like playing drums. Yeah, um, yeah so I, I've been playing guitar a long time I guess but not it's funny so uh, a great great story um, I got my first guitar when I was like probably 10 mm-hmm. right Same, yeah. and just kind of like it was my grandpa he bought a acoustic guitar for me at a garage sale just tinkered around never took lessons um, made terrible sounds and then <laughs> as I got older I kind of like oh I, I found bands I want to pursue and like and then I started joining bands playing mm-hmm. with bands you know uh, mainly metal you know yeah. so two years ago um, I've been following this guy, Charlie Robbins, mm-hmm. for a little while. Amazing guitar. Like, this dude, he's young, young guy, just classically trained, shreds, dude. Yeah. Like, just crazy. So, I was like, man, this shit's so cool. And then I saw he's, like, posting something about, hey, uh, I'm going to be taking new students for online lessons. Message me to inquire. So, I was like, you know. Um, it was, like, a month wait, and he finally got back to me. He's like, hey, you know, I got an opening. And so, I, I ate it up. And I remember, dude, I'll never forget the first... Uh, lesson it was a video zoom lesson he's out of california and mind you like i'm 36 at this point so i've been playing for what 23 years we'll say and then take lessons and then i'm taking lessons right yeah and i at this point you know i have my habits my bad habits i got Mm -hmm. my good habits i got my basic rudiment knowledge um 
and I'm just sweating beads. I'm just like logging on, sweating beads. Like, oh, I'm going to fucking be with Charlie Robbins right here face to face. This is crazy. And so we log on, we small talk, get to know each other. And he's like, all right, man, well, let's, uh, let's rip it. Let's see what you got, you know, and show me just whatever. You just start sweet picking. I want to see where you're at. I knew <laughs> I pulled out all the stops. I'm like, <laughs> just like trying everything I got. Right. And then like, I play for like two minutes and I'm like, all right, cool. And I stop. He's like, all right, cool. Uh, well, for starters, you're holding the guitar kind of wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Dude, I'll never forget it. Just brought me down to square one, man. <laughs> he didn't even say anything about what you played. He's like, you're fucking holding your instrument yeah. wrong. Dude. Dude. I was like, you could do that? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I mean, what it was is like the thumb, right? Like, you're, he, he's classically trained, so you keep your thumb on the bottom. You never see your thumb. So if your thumb peeks out, you're wrong. So, Stop it. But you look, at, you look at amazing, I mean, Steve Vai, you see his thumb peek out. Like, yeah. everybody does I it. I mean, there's some guys that they just, they'll, they'll play that E string like That's that. That's true. You know, they'll use it as like a, you know, almost like a bass line. Yeah, yeah. You know, what kind of music did you grow up on? Well, I, I started, I grew up on country, man. Like, 90s country, dude. Don't look at the camera. No, dude, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome, man. This fucking. Christian fucking country <laughs> motherfucker, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm learning shit about you right now. Bro. Oh man, don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Country's oh. good, man. Country's good. Good. Country's 90s good. country, man. Yeah. Garth Brooks. That was my first concert. At, uh, Show us the bodies, Garth. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Brooks and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I grew up on country. Thanks, thanks, mom. Um, and then I kind of moved to like you know like fucking Disturbed, Corn, Godsmack. You know, new metal. Yeah. Mudvayne. I was big on Mudvayne. Mud Slipknot. Awesome. I saw that Ozfest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. Never been to an Ozfest. Always wanted to. Yeah, just never did. Got but. to see fucking Static X before Ooh. Wayne Static died. That'd be sweet. Yeah, it was like Static X, uh, Lordy, Lordy. Uh, they're like a a Finnish band. Mm. I guess the Prime Minister of, of Finland listens to them. All right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta be good. <laughs> Finland's the happiest country in the world yeah, right now. Yeah, like God, God, and then uh, um, Black Sabbath. Well, no, no, it was Ozzy. Yeah, it was Ozzy. Ozzy was Sweet. doing stuff. That was cool, man. Mudvayne, man. I've been to like probably six or seven Mudvayne concerts. In fact, the f- <laughs> I'll never forget. Uh, I was I was 15, and me and my cousin and my friend went to a Mudvayne concert. But we went to my grandma's house first because we we're gonna sleep there that night. Yeah. And a little have a little sleepover, you know. So I brought my weed, you know, and my little cheetah print metal pipe that I had, you know, and. Um, it's like this is gonna be good. We're gonna smoke at the concert, you know. Well, we get to the concert, go to bust out the weed. I don't have it. Where is it? You know? Uh, and I remember, oh, it's in my fucking shirt pocket that's folded for tomorrow at grandma's house. And so we go to the, you know, do the concert thing. We get back home. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's good for a glaucoma, too. <laughs> <laughs> she fucking, no, she's just sitting in her rocking chair watching TV with my grandpa, you know? And I'm like, hey, guys, you know, how was the concert? Good, whatever. First thought, go in the basement, get your fucking shirt, you know? So I go in the basement. The basket it was in is empty. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm looking around, looking around, dude. All of a sudden, I hear a voice looking for this. And my grandma's behind me holding my bag of weed in my pipe. I was like, whoa. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was. And she's Roll like, <laughs> you know, she didn't have to say it, but I knew she was disappointed, right? Yeah. So she's like, well, I'm just going to throw it in the garbage here and walk away. You do whatever you think you have That's to cool. do. That's yeah. actually really cool. So she walked away, and I grabbed that weed, and I smoked it that Did she night. she ever smoke? Did she smoke now? She uh, no, she's gone, but she, I don't, I don't think she ever smoked. No, yeah. no. I She'd be amazing to smoke with. My, oh, my God. My grandma, we used to do bong rips. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma, she'd be like, let me hit that shit. It's crazy, dude. Dude. My grandma's a pimp, man. Still around? No. Mm. She's gone, too. She's hanging out with your grandma. Yeah, dude. Maybe she got my grandma to smoke a, a yeah. bong rip, she's too. Like, she's like, rip through shit, dude. <laughs> dude, okay, so, so I told you I was on the way to tell you. I got so fucking high the other day, bro. Oh, mm, God, Yeah, dude. let's hear the story. Oh, I got locked out of my phone for three hours. I was putting in the wrong fucking passcode. <laughs> That's how high you were. I put it... I put it I know, dude. It's so stupid. I use it every day, dude. I use it every day. And uh, I put in, you know, five times wrong. It's like, all right, your phone's locked for a minute. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I go to put it in again, and it's like, nope, you fucked up. Now you got to wait five minutes. And I was like, all right, this is getting a little serious. <laughs> so <laughs> I did it wrong again. Oh, my God. Now I'm now I'm getting in my head. It's, it's like when you think about something, and now you think it's wrong. Yep. Like if you say a word too long, yeah. it, now you're like, that's not it. That sounds funny. Next thing I know, I got to wait an hour. 
And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I tried it one more time. I go, okay. Boom, 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 boom. Phone's locked for three hours. Cops show up at I'm your like, door. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, the NSA, it's like, what are you doing with this guy's phone? I'm like, it's mine as well. Wow, three fucking hours. Three hours. And then once I start, once I start like coming down from the weed, I'm like, let me try this one. And it fucking worked. I was yeah. like, I'm a fucking <laughs> what? Idiot, How different were the codes you were putting in from the one that works to the one that's not working? Were they were completely different, or was it like one? <laughs> <laughs> What were you smoking? Where can I get that? Man, that's that, crazy. That, that peanut butter kush, man. Peanut butter. I, that's on. I'm a peanut butter fiend, dude. Really? I love peanut butter. I have this theory about peanut butter. Hmm. So uh, George Washington Carver invented peanut butter. George Washington, the president? No, Carver, the black guy. Oh. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm smart, too. You okay? <laughs> I have this theory. Because it's always white kids that have peanut, peanut allergies. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling that somebody during the time of the George Floyd riots, went back in time and said, we got to stop these white people and made him invent peanut butter. <laughs> Is, I can't recollect a, a black child with a peanut allergy, but is that pretty? It's a white thing, dude. Is <laughs> during the riots, they're like, dude, they, they did this to our, our boy George. He's like, I need to go back. We need to fix this. And they made peanut butter. Wow, and they, they just started f- fucking up these white kids. Was there some? I, I don't keep up much with news, but isn't there something now with the whole George Floyd thing? Like it, it's like fentanyl was involved or something? Yeah, th- I mean everyone's gonna have a mixed reaction about it, but yeah, yeah, they said that that he was that he had fentanyl in his system or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, probably shouldn't get into that because <laughs> that, that can either get you ratings or get or lose them. <laughs> you better not. I'm like, oh, too soon. Oops. Well, I guess. Anyway, I guess they're showing up on Black Time. Yeah. So let's talk about Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> okay. Um, so I just saw in the news that Kyle Rittenhouse was. Uh, <laughs> this it's so crazy. So that cause, yeah. yeah. I want to hear. So he's supposed. To, he was supposed to speak. I don't know if he did or he's supposed to. He's supposed to speak at like the University of Michigan. And the only reason I know this is because angry Facebook posts, they're like, this is ridiculous. So they're trying to buy up all the tickets so that when he goes out there, like nobody's there. And I'm like, you guys are going to buy all the tickets? Support that man. It's, it's funny because uh, I, don't, I don't know if you knew about this, but like Ja Rule and 50 Cent were like having a beef. I heard something about that. And 50 Cent bought like the first couple rows at his concert and then <laughs> just <laughs> him. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, whatever you want to buy all the tickets, that's fine. I'm just glad there's not going to be a long line so I can get my AR 15 signed. <laughs> signed. Oh my God. <laughs> I heard something about like Nickelback too, right? Wasn't someone going to buy like all the Nickelback concert tickets and then just it was him and his buddy because they hate them? I don't, I don't know. Why does everybody hate Nickelback? You know that's a it, it's <laughs> an easy answer. They they're just Nickelback. They're easy to hate. They're yeah, easy to it's hate. Like Taylor Swift. Yeah, I don't get why everybody likes her. So she's much. hot, dude. Taylor Swift is attractive to me. I think she is. I mean, yeah, she doesn't. Whether you she think doesn't. she's hot or not, there's plenty of people that think other people are hot. So like, what is it about Taylor Swift that's making her this Oprah antichrist kind of figure? Yeah. Leave Kyle Rittenhouse and Taylor Swift alone, dude. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Maybe they should get together. <laughs> that that'd be so weird. That'd be, be the a... weirdest lesbian couple in here ever. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why everyone hates that Taylor Swift though, dude. Like I don't hate her. I just don't get they it. They hate her, dude. I People read the hate comments. Her. It's yeah. so weird, dude. She's a good person. She's fu- she's fucking killing it, dude. No, dude, she's flying her jet fifteen minutes. That ain't good. Yeah, she's so she flies her jet to get a cup of water. I mean, whatever. I don't judge what people do in their house. <laughs> It was weird. I saw somebody talking shit about uh, Taylor Swift, and they're like, Miley Cyrus. And then I looked at that, and I was like, what do you mean? That, that, that chick is fucking nuts, man. Yeah, well. So crazy. I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather have Taylor Swift than I think uh, Miley Cyrus. It, there's, there's a trend there, right? Like, I, I look at Miley Cyrus, and then you look at, like, like Britney Spears, too, right? Uh, like, they've, they've definitely taken a different t- turn in their, uh, what do you want to call it, demeanor? Or whatever it is, are they finding themselves or are they lost? You know, I I, I wonder. I wonder how both. It, what's both. Yeah. Both. Well, you heard about? Did you did you listen to that Rogan where Miley Cyrus was on it and she talks about how Billy Ray had her on the back of the motorcycle or the dirt bike back in the day and like they were they were riding and then 
he ducked because there was a branch. She got the shit. Boom. Hit her head. Boom. Just knocked. And she, I guess, wasn't the same since. They said the same thing about Roseanne. Roseanne. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know what? I thought the same thing about myself after I heard the Roseanne story because I, uh, I got hit by a, a van when I was a little kid. Holy shit. I ran out in the middle of the road when I was like five and I got fucking smoked by a van. And a man, I've hit my head so many times. I, I well, you used to fight too, didn't you? Yeah. And I fell in the bathtub one time. Fucking, I know I, I blacked out for a second. So I think I got CTE, man. CTE is. That's, uh, so what happens with CTE is when you're like, it, it's mostly with like boxers and uh, like football players. So your brain, it bounces off your skull. And it's basically a bunch of like little scars. Mm. And uh, if you get enough of it, it'll drive you crazy. Like that's uh, the Aaron Hernandez. Did uh, you watch that? No, I didn't watch it, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like it, it. A lot of like a lot of athletes, they'll get CTE and they'll have like rage. Sure. Yeah, they'll take it out on their families. They'll you know they'll get depressed. They'll kill themselves. You know, it's just just fucks up your programming mm. and everything, you know, like soccer players when they're, you know, like they're hitting their head on balls and stuff. And, oh yeah. Think you know, that. it's, it's weird because, you know, they put these helmets on athletes and stuff to like make things safer, but it, the sport would be safer if they didn't have helmets. <laughs> what? Yeah. What you have a, if you have, if you don't have a helmet on, you're not going to run at full speed at somebody. That's true. You're going to be a little more conscious of where your head's hit. Yeah. So more about this getting hit by a van, dude. Like how was what happened? Holy this, shit! This is crazy. I remember it too, man. I'm, it's so weird. Uh, when I was little, we were living in uh, we were living in Illinois. Me and my mom and my brothers, and I, we were at the Social Security office. And <laughs> I guess I I guess I had to run out to the car to get. I had a little Michael Jackson jacket. Hmm. I had the Thriller jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I ran out to go get it. And when I ran out there. Um, I got hit by a van. Oh. So someone goes, someone goes, some little girl just got hit by a van because I, because <laughs> I had long hair. <laughs> and she, and, and she goes, as soon as I heard that, I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, I knew it was you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> some little girl just got hit by a van. <laughs> so yeah. how was the uh, the injury? How was that? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she just moonwalk out of that situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Dude, uh, I I got man. She oh my god. There's one time she told me that uh we we're we we're in Illinois and it was like during like a like a there's like tornado warnings and stuff going on. And she had this Trans Am at the time and she <laughs> she starts she starts driving, and I guess I opened the door and I fell out. Oh she God. said she looked in the rearview mirror. <laughs> <laughs> We're running after. <laughs> I'm like, well, why'd you notice in the rearview mirror? Why didn't you notice when your car <laughs> fell out of the fucking car? Right. The door opened. <laughs> that was your first sign. You're like, it's cold. Oh shit! God damn it! <laughs> wow. Did you catch up? Huh? <laughs> Did you catch up to the car? I mean, yeah. She, she, she pulled over and let me let me. <laughs> Glad I didn't fall oh out. Oh my of a, god! Glad I didn't, glad it didn't roll when I fell out. Daredevil, of a man. T top. Fall out of a T top. <laughs> 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 so we were talking a little bit uh, about like social media and stuff, and and like its effects on the brain. Do you, uh, you you have kids and everything? How do you feel about them having like uh, access to the internet? That's been a because it's, it's almost it's almost like a requirement now. Like yeah. it's weird that like. Social requirement, yeah. right? Yeah, and we we have a sixteen year old, you mm-hmm. know, so he's a junior in high school, and that's crazy. Phew, tell me about it, dude. Yeah, that's a big thing. And there's like certain social medias where like, like I don't I don't have Snapchat. I've mm-hmm. never had Snapchat. I don't know shit about Snapchat. Mm-hmm. I hear like the bad things about Snapchat before I hear about the good things, you know. So when he asked for Snapchat, of course I'm like reluctant. And my wife and I were both in agreement, like I don't, I don't know. You can have Instagram and and you know. That's cool. Tick, you know, he's got TikTok too. Uh, but we, you know, we put limits on his phone. He's 16. Yeah. You know, when he's 18, do do your thing. Do your thing. But like, while I have you under my, you know, coaching and supervision, I, I'm, we're gonna make sure that you are not, uh, not able to, not able to like, 
go overboard, right? Mm -hmm. Teach you what in moderation means. Yeah. Because I didn't have any regulations like that on my phone back in the day. And, dude, I mean, I was I was terrible with that stuff. Yeah, there wasn't much you could do on a Motorola Razor. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no parental lock on a flip that, phone. It's no. all about that Razor scooter. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. shins just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you scootered? Mm -hmm. ah, you I, I had I, I had one when oh, I was a yeah. kid. Yeah, I never had one. Yeah, um, I had sweet bunny hops. You do the, the the whip. I don't know what they call it in scooter language. Oh, the tail whip. Tail whip is it tail whip? Okay. Yeah, I hit my shin and I was like, "Fuck this." Yeah. Fuck this stupid. <laughs> no scooters. I, I tried them. I just couldn't get on it. I couldn't. I couldn't get it. I wasn't as good as I wanted to be, so I just gave up. Yeah. You know. I always uh, going back to the thing about social media. I I go back and forth about it myself too because like we're aware of the effects of social media, uh, you know, and everything like that. Mm. And, you know, as adults, we know, you know, the negatives and stuff. And honestly, there's a lot more negatives than positives. <sighs> totally. And, um, you know, my kid, you know, he, he likes watching movies. His favorite movie is Puss in Boots. Have you watched the new Puss in Boots? Oh, many times. I watch it like five times every fucking day <laughs> at minimum. And, uh, you know, I think about it sometimes because, like, there's a lot of people that they, tablets are their, their babysitters. Yeah, right. And I, I really don't want to go there. I really want to try to put off him uh, getting a phone as long as I can. Like, there's even people that that work for tech companies that won't let their kids use those things. Sure. You know, they know what it does. Well, they're smart. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, there's times where, because I, I got two phones, right? I yeah. got a, a studio phone and a personal phone. Yeah. So, like, I'm thinking of an instance the other day, Cal, my six-year-old and I, we were at the Buzz and we go there, he gets lemonade and chippies, I get coffee, and we just chill. We mm -hmm. just hang out, you know? And it, he wanted to play a game on my, my studio phone, which I was like, yeah, go for it, you know? So yeah. he's playing a game. And I got my phone out, and I'm like, you know what, no. I don't, want, I don't want us to both be on our solo phones. So I stopped and was just interacting with him on one phone. So I, I felt like... I feel like kind of like what you were talking about just a little bit ago about the whole TV thing, you know, um, back in the day, a TV screen, the family got around it and it was a social yeah. thing. It wasn't just like one person sucked into something. And yeah. so it was a gathering point. It, it was, was a, a gathering thing. Like the radio back then, yeah. right? And yeah. People would sit around the radio. Yeah. No one's allowed to gather around one phone. Right. Yeah. 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 They got, you got the privacy screens. Yeah. You can't see it at a 30 degree yeah. angle or whatever it's it is. Fucking, so. What are you ashamed of? <laughs> yeah, what are you what hiding are you in, there? in there? In that little box there. You got smut on there? <laughs> well, of course they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Do you, think, do you think your kids looked at porn on his phone? Um, do I think he's ever going to watch this? Uh, <laughs> 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 he's over here like, man, my dad's on a pop. Fuck. Fuck this guy. <laughs> he's, deleting his, he's deleting his history. <laughs> I mean, I don't Busted. know. Busted. Dude, I hope he has at this point. He's 16. Like, you know, I hope it's... <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, dude. I Brody, he's awesome, man. He's such a good kid. He really is. He's, he's a good musician, man. You got oh, him playing the drums and stuff. He's too. in my band. He's the drummer of my band. Get the fuck out of here. I'm dead serious. We're going to play shows this, this year. This is the year. Damn, I'm going to have to go. Yeah, man. That's and he's cool. in another band. He plays guitar in another band. Yeah. So the other day we were talking, and uh, he was talking about, like, setting up a show and stuff. And I was like, yeah. we." He was, he was talking about setting up a show? Well, like, us all kind of setting up a show together. Yeah. So he, he'll, you know, our band and his other band playing together. So he's going to do two sets? Oh, yeah. Drum in one and guitar in the other. Your kid's going to be famous. He's a, Dude, he's on a roll. And he's very, like, like you know how it is because you play guitar, too. Mm -hmm. So when you when you are trying to nail a riff... You're gonna fucking repeat that thing a thousand times for an hour while everybody around you is just annoyed as shit hearing the same thing over and over. You're just like, no, 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 it's beautiful, you know, and you're cranking it out. He's the same way, man. It's even worse when you're doing that in a guitar center. <laughs> in the store. <laughs> God damn it, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, I, somebody unplugged that line six. <laughs> I feel bad. My wife does that. I mean, she'll she'll tell me she's like, ah, oh, it you really it's really good, but I just heard it a thousand times. I'm like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I, yeah. I get it. That's how I feel with comedy. Like saying the same <laughs> joke over and over, or what? It's weird because like, so one of the things about comedy is like, you work on these jokes for a long time. You don't just tell it, tell it and you're like, this is the one. You mm -hmm. know, you work on these. Like like Tom Segura, his last special he did, he 
he toured those jokes for two years before he filmed it. Damn. Yeah. So the thing is, is like you tell a joke a thousand times, but every time you tell it, you act like it's the first time you said it. Sure. It, oh yeah, that makes and sense. Ex, you know, so you gotta like make sure you do enough open mics so that you can get it around. And you're not showing the same mic doing the same thing. Yeah. But there's sometimes where I'm like, fuck, man, I don't, I'm not writing enough new stuff. And I was like, well, I'll pull out the hits. And <laughs> but you know, the same thing. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm getting tired of this. And then you can just work on it. You can add like tags to it and stuff like that. But hmm. um, my kid's mom would go with me to uh, um, you know open mics and stuff. You know, she's taking me to those, so she would see them, and you know, she would keep hearing the same stuff over and over and over again. And you know, I'm just like, she's the only one not laughing in the crowd. She knows these. <laughs> her favorite joke. Her favorite joke of mine is actually it's a domestic abuse joke. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> she thinks it's hilarious, dude. I think it's hilarious too. Every, when I tell the crowd, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what to do. Yeah, I'm like, she's right there. She's cool with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about comedy, man. I mean, it's it's supposed to break those barriers, right? Like yeah. where it's it's not necessarily true. It's okay, you know. Yeah, I think that's what makes it funny. Yeah. Oh, we just saw uh, we just saw Seinfeld in November, and. I'm a big Seinfeld fanatic. Uh, the show or him in general? We saw, well, I, the show and, and him. So I like, love the show. I've seen the show. I mean, I don't know how many times I've seen the fucking nine seasons, man. But he, uh, yeah, so him as a person, I don't want to speak on. I don't know mm -hmm. enough about the guy, you know. And I've talked about him, and, and then I've heard people be like, oh, yeah, but he's like an asshole. You know, it's like, I don't care. He's funny. You know, he's good. We You're saw him. This person that you've met one time is an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, but we saw him in November, and he recycled jokes, right? Like, and, and that's seeing, the thing about Seinfeld. He does that. Oh, is that his, just kind of more of a him his, thing? His new, one of his newer specials was pretty much him doing jokes that he did on Seinfeld. Like, yeah. remember when they would start doing like those little bits before? He would do those, and he, you know, he'd pull out the old bangers. And you're watching these, and you're like. These references are kind of old, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's so Remember JFK. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with yeah? What's Clinton? The deal? What's the deal with Clinton? And like I, he still he was still funny. His show honestly was great. He even had like a a, a period there where he like took Q and A from the crowd, and mm -hmm. so you kind of seen him work on his on his feet, you That's know, cool. rather than having reciting shit. So that was that was cool. There's this really if if you like Seinfeld, have you watched Comedian? I don't think so. So it's a it's an older movie and it's based around um, Seinfeld and um, fuck I feel like such a dipshit for not remembering remembering his name but um, you got your phone I only got service oh damn well fuck I feel like such a dipshit we're we'll plug it we'll plug his name right yeah. <laughs> right below this I'll figure it out and um, so it follows Seinfeld like in clubs like at the comedy cellar and stuff like working out material mm. so you see seinfeld on stage bombing oh cool you see him go in there and be like oh you know i tried this and you know that didn't work well the other comedian it was before he had his big break so you also get to watch him go through the same process but then they run into each other and you know they're at a mic, and, and Seinfeld's going and, and giving him advice, and you, you know everything like that. It's really cool. It's like the most uh, behind the scenes, I yeah. guess, uh, look that you can get into being a comedian. And this is a documentary. Yeah, okay. it's a documentary. I guess. You, yeah, I mean it, it's following both of them. It, it's a good. It's a good movie. It's a really good movie. I would recommend watching it. Okay. You, you know, even if you don't do it, you like Seinfeld. It's, I, li I like comedy. Dude, you know who I've been following? Who? Jeff R. Curie. You follow this guy? Mm -hmm. oh, I feel like you'd love him. Dude, really? he's... So he he's works the crowd, mainly. I feel mm -hmm. like 90% of his material is just, like, working the crowd. And he's just so fucking funny, dude. And he's, like, this squ squirrely little, like, little shithead. But he's just... He's he's a good... He seems like a solid dude. And he's just fucking funny. I don't know how That's else to put it. Man. Did, you, did you watch you watch the Shane Gillis one? The Shane Gillis... Beautiful Dogs. No, no. I've seen like just reels of him. I've never really watched anything of his. You're the last person on earth. Oh, the last of us. <laughs> You're yeah. the last one that's, dude, you gotta watch it. It's funny. Okay, what's, what's called? Uh, Beautiful Dogs. Beautiful Dogs. It's cool. He was just on Saturday Night Live. Um, he got to, um, he was a guest with Saturday Night Live and it, it was it was really cool because he got fired from SNL. 
Oh, no shit. They fired him because they found like old tweets where he said <laughs> he said some uh, stuff about Asians. So they fired him. And uh, then they asked him the, they, they asked him to host. <laughs> so he went on there and he hosted it. So it's kind of like oh, weird. What now? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's cool because like other than Chappelle, like he's one of the darker comics or whatever that that's been on there. So it was a good representation of comedy in general. And it was it was interesting because he talks about race in it. He says gay. He says retard. No, but Chappelle or Sh- Gillis. Gillis says it in his monologue. He no. says gay and retarded in there, and he makes a, a uh, some racial jokes and stuff. And I was watching an interview, and they they go, did, did SNL know that you were going to say gay and retard? He goes, no. Oh, wow. He goes, I didn't practice it like that. That's bold. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn. And they aired it. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it killed, bro. It killed. Wow. And it, it was so cool. And then after that, he, uh, he Netflix... Uh, is is giving him a show. He's getting a show based off something that a pilot he created, and uh, he's getting another Netflix special. Oh no, shit! It's crazy. Damn, man. It's really cool. Yeah, I hear his name brought up a lot, and like I've seen, I've just seen like you know bits of his and Trump, the Trump one, of course. His <laughs> his imitation, yeah, on point. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's so good. Yeah, you're gay. <laughs> the whole like uh, the funniest president to be assassinated. You know, that's one I always see. Um, you should watch. Uh, it just dropped like two days ago. Brian Simpson, it's Brian Simpson special. Uh, it's over at the Mothership. Mm. Fucking hilarious! It's my favorite special of this year. Mm. It's good, dude. Brian Simpson's a fucking hilarious comic. I feel like I've seen some stuff, or maybe I follow him already. I Brian saw. Simpson? So I, I, w- I was out at uh, I was out in Austin in, in January. And I went to Mothership to go see that they do this show called Bottom of the Barrel, where basically like they'll bring out different comics and they'll pull suggestions that the audience wrote out. And so he he hosts that, and I'm in the second row. I'm like from me to you, where the comics performing, and they're like, "All right, we got we got something special for you." They pull out Shane Gillis, mm. so we're all like, "Damn!" What? Oh, and he, his I'm over here like, "Why didn't they pull my shit out, man?" So the first suggestion he pulls out is mine. Oh, <laughs> what, Gillis? Yeah, dude. You know what my suggestion no, was? No, what is it? Snuff films. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So then, like, I'm fucking stoked because basically, like, they're they're writing on on the spot, basically, you know. So it's really cool to, to kind of see that. And then, right when you think it's over, you're like, "Man, fucking Shane's here." They go, "We got one more special thing for you." Joe Rogan and Ron White come out, and they're both blasted on acid. Get the fuck out! So there. I'm watching them. They're on acid, and Ron White's like. <laughs> Everyone's like, let's go, everybody. Oh my <laughs> Dude, God. I'm like, Dude, this is sick, bro. Wow. This shit was so sick. And then the next day, fucking Ron White hopped on a bus to start his tour. Damn. Yeah. What a fucking way to well, go. Well, that had to be a great experience. Damn, Allegedly, dude. Ron White walks around with a vial of acid on him. I think I heard that. I heard <laughs> something like that, dude. Oh, Just in case, break the glass emergency <laughs> situation. <laughs> Shit's hitting the fan. Gotta do it. Well, I'm not drinking anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, shit, man. Um, so back to tattooing, man. Um, what do you think about... Because I know that you, that you have to deal with this. Um, Pinterest. When somebody, you know, when clients are coming in and they just like. Sure. That. <laughs> no words. Um, so p- I, f- I feel like Pinterest is just like any other kind of photo, you know, Google Images or uh, 500px. Yeah. It's a really good one. Uh, they're good tools, resources yeah. for inspiration. Yes. Not for replication. It's a, Pinterest and like Instagram has almost become like the new Flash. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Well, that's pretty good. I like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instead of flashboards, you got a big iPad, touch yeah. smart board. Instead of you know, drawings that people already did, it's just tattoos they already did. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's funny. Well, I don't know. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, there was there was this one photo that went viral. I think it was like a superhero, uh, like compilation tattoo, and they took a photo of a tattoo that was done and they put it on somebody else. Well. They tattooed a nipple on it, cause the tattoo is on his side. So when they replicated it, they just made a stencil out of. What I was remember there. that. I think I seen that shit, so dude. D- 
the tattoo the guy <laughs> that, oh, that originally had the tattoo they tattooed his nipple like, on how the do you other do guy. that how do you fucking do that man as a tattoo artist like that's you, how you know who's down for this and who's not. Yeah, no shit, no shit. You know uh, what was it? I watched that Sailor Jerry documentary, and uh, allegedly he would, you know, artists would send different like, uh, you know, etches, uh, you know, of, of like flash and stuff to other artists. So allegedly Sailor Jerry would always put something wrong in it, and he and he would go, well, if they were too dumb to fix it, they shouldn't be tattooing. Oh, that's that's cool. Filter them out. Yeah, I like that. But it's like you see people with like like Shutterfly or whatever, like the Shutterstock, you know, tattooed the, on them by accident. The like, watermarks. The watermarks. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a few times to put a design together and I'm like, don't, yeah, don't I should. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that same. little camera logo is not going to be in this. I history. take the blur tool. I just kind of try to get that shit out of there. Yeah. No. I don't care. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I stole this fucking image. Welcome to the club. <laughs> you ever uh, spell anything wrong in a tattoo? Me too. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not proud about this, but the other day. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, sometimes like, the thing about lettering is like, even though it's something that's meant to be read, when you tattoo it, it's an image. These are exactly. images of letters, shapes, and, and flow. So sometimes like, you don't read it. Yeah. And you're drawing it. So this. <laughs> this. Dude, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> this dude he wanted blessed on his neck, and I was like, yeah, bro, I got you. And as I'm tattooing it, and I'm not proud of this, I don't care. Fuck you guys. Um, <laughs> this is really the other day. <laughs> this is like, this is like two days ago. Okay. So, <laughs> so I, I put it on there, and I'm, I hit I hit the B. It's all in old English. I hit the B. I hit the L. I hit the E, and then I go. I, I put B L E E S S E D. Bleast. And I go, hey, man, I said, uh, let me make a new stencil really quick. I was like, I'm glad I caught this. <laughs> right, at least you caught it. You caught it. So I just wiped off the rest of it, laid the stencil down. And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> my bad. All right, my bad. Woo. You know, and then sometimes, this is what's crazy, too, is like sometimes people will give you the wrong shit. Oh, yeah. You know, so that's Dates. why, yeah, so that's why, like, it's nice to have, like, hey, write this down. Mm-hmm. So then, like, I, they come back to, hey, man, you pulled out the trash, you're like, you wrote this. Especially some of these names these days, right? <laughs> so I'm not proud of this either. But <laughs> when, I, when I first got into the shop tattoo and I was up in Racine and like we were in the hood, man. We were in the hood. It was a walk-in shop. Modern and, Image. Yeah, Modern yeah. Image. Shout out Modern Image. Shout out Anthony. Yep. Um, I was right down the road at Lost Soul. Yeah, dude. It's crazy, man. We were always like that close to each other. Yeah. Um, so I had a, a folder full of crazy ghetto names. Anytime someone would come in and they're just like, throwing letters and apostrophe marks and hyphens and shit. And when I'd see a crazy one, I would keep it and I would put it in a folder. <laughs> and I would be like, it's the Marky on Kui Kui. Kui Kui. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> and I'd be like, dude, check this out. <laughs> That's funny, dude. Oh, my God. I wish you still had that folder. Yeah, I do, too. <laughs> It'd probably be weird. It'd just be a whole bunch of Jackson with X's and shit. Uh, yeah. Um, Quick sound. I remember this one time, this... Uh, this girl came in and she wanted Roman numerals for her kids' date on her, and uh, you know what? You know, before I go in this, you know what this is is cool about tattooing is you learn so much because of how much different shit you do. So now, like, I can write stuff in Roman numerals because I I, I like know all the because of tattooing. Yeah, you know, like ten, five, you know, a hundred, and you know all that stuff. Yeah. Like, so this chick came in and she wanted her kid's birth date on her shoulder in Roman numerals. I was like, all right, fine. So I go and do it and she goes, you put the wrong date on me. I'm like, yeah, all right. So I pull out her form and it's right there. I was like, you wrote down the wrong date. And it, usually that's a dad thing. Oh, really? Usually like they, a, they fuck you, it up? Usually a dad will be the one that's like, oh, my bad. You know, <laughs> but, but the mom? Yeah. I was like, yeah. that's fucked up. I remember this one time I was working with somebody. And there was this dude, he, uh, you know, he was a vet, he's in the army, and he, uh, he wanted like a flag or something with Made in America on his arm, and dude tattooed it, and he spelled America wrong, it said Ameria. I'm like, this dude just went to fucking Iraq, came wow. back for you to put Made in America on his oh. fucking arm. <laughs> Damn it, dude. Be so upset about that. <laughs> It's crazy, dude. I, man, it, it, you see some crazy shit. Like, I, man, I've seen people like they'll do like a uh, like a Bible verse, and 
he spelt it wrong and he tried to blame it on her, but I pulled his stencil out. I was like, you had it right on the stencil. Like, how did you fuck that up? Somewhere along the line, you went rogue. <laughs> He's like, I'm doing my thing. It was supposed to say recess. It said recess. Oh, he shit. Was like, it was weird. It was like, it was like all off. Bro. Oh, my God. It's so crazy, man. What's the cra- Okay, this is weird because it's like, it's weird when a client asks you this, but like tattoo artists are tattoo artists. What's, what's like a crazy tattoo you've done? Um, yeah, no, that's a question we get asked pretty yeah. often. Because I think, you know, when you're sitting hours with people, they're just like, what can I talk about? Uh, I think one of the craziest things I've done was this guy who had no tattoos. Walked in, is that Parker? Mm-hmm. Walked in, uh, completely clean slate. He's like, hey, uh, I, I'm looking to get a sleeve. And I was like, oh, cool, you know, all right, sweet. He's like, I'd be my first tattoo. So I don't know what to expect. I was like, Awesome, even better. That's I love that. I love that when people get big tattoos for the first. Yeah, it's like one exactly. of my favorite parts of it. Uh, Good jump off point. Yeah, right. Rather, rather than getting like a small Tasmanian devil, you're yeah. gonna cover it up. And Eventually, just, I want to incorporate years. this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> into a big sleeve. You know. <laughs> um, so yeah, then he's like, I was like, what do you want? What are, what are you thinking? And he's like, well, uh, last night I just tripped on mushrooms, and I uh, for the first time, and it was the wildest trip, and I want to get a, my sleeve dedicated that to represent that yeah i'm like what it's like no way you know you always hear people with grandiose ideas they never pull through Mm -hmm. and this guy pulled through he made i mean i probably did you know eight or nine sessions on this guy and he had art based off this artist acid flow is his name i've heard of him have you yeah Yeah. so it's 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 just trippy shit you look at it's full of colors shapes faces everything you know so and so we we pieced together the sleeve with with acid flow art and like some of our own things that we did in the likeness of acid flow. And yeah, dude, he got a whole sleeve like cool. based off one mushroom trip. That's so, pretty cool. I don't know where he's at now. I mean, what he's doing now, but I put a I put a I got an award at a show for uh, this. Actually, no, it, it wasn't for that one. Anyway, I did this. I went to uh, was I in Colorado for it? No, I think I was here. It's, it's not important anyway, but I did this tattoo on this dude, and it was an owl, and I was like, dude, I'm going to put something together fucking dope. So I took some acid, locked myself in a closet, and I'm sitting there, <laughs> like, drawing on my tablet. I was like, this is going to be fire. And it was actually pretty cool, man. Oh. It was uh, it was an owl because uh, everyone gets, like, a lion. They want a crown on it. I was like, why can't an owl have a crown on it? Because, like, yeah – Lions are strong, but I was like, owls are smart. Yeah. So this owl's got like this crown on. He's he's got like the the king robe on. Mm. He's got a little cross on. He's holding it, and he's just like, <laughs> he's just like, he is gangster. And then his his crown was like turning into like feathers. It was, sweet. It, was it really, sounds pretty sweet. It was really cool. And uh, I did it on my tablet, so like I got to watch back on Procreate. Like, oh yeah. Go through that. But I used a reference for the owl's face, obviously, and then everything else. I, I just, I just went and fucking drew. It was so crazy. It was so trippy. Damn. And uh, that was cool. Uh, awesome. Back to back to crazy stories. So when I was working at Modern Image, um, that's the thing I like about tattooing. There's so many crazy stories. Oh so, my god. And with that shop, it was so cool because it was like a walk-in shop. It was at a cool time with tattooing. Like tattooing was a little bit more exciting at that point. Mm. Maybe it's just because of where I was and I was more excited to tattoo and take on whatever and you know it was fresh but there were still people like not introduced to what tattooing was yet yeah anywho this this guy comes in this black dude and he's talking to another artist and he wants a giant gd star on top of his head which is basically a star of david so the other artist he's like he's like man you don't want that dude you don't want that and he goes no bro like i want this he goes what what about employment? He's like, I get che- checks from Illinois. He goes, I don't need employment. And he goes, he goes, I don't feel comfortable doing that. He's like, if easy wants to. And I'm like, you want that? He's like, yeah. I was like, fuck it, let's do it, dude. Mm. So we put a G- <laughs> we put a GD star on it. Hey, you know, I want to make sure it looks good. I don't want a friendly fire. So <laughs> yeah, right. So we put the GD star on top of his head, and like he was down. You know, I mean, he could grow hair, hair out too. You know? Sure. Okay. So he gets that, and I'm like, this is crazy. Then, like, two weeks later, he's back. I walk into the shop, and he's getting tattooed by the guy that said he didn't want to do it. And I look over. I'm like, what's this guy getting now? And he's getting a backward swastika on, back of his, on the back of his arm. I guess it's like, a, you know, it's like a street, a street thing. Okay. And they flip it backwards, and it's like, 
they're GD, but they're like GD renegades. They're like, oh man, we're GD, but we don't fuck with them. We're on our own shit. And I'm like, this dude's got a fucking Star of David on top of his head and a swastika on the back of his arm. Wow. Should have stayed in school. <laughs> <laughs> stay, in school. <laughs> stay in school, kids. Yeah. And, and you're not supposed to have either one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. Um, yeah, people are crazy, dude. It's funny because you learn a lot. Like, oh, like back to like you said, mm-hmm. you learn a lot through tat, like the Roman numerals. You learn about mm-hmm. these gang symbols, History. you know, mythology. Yeah. How much mythology have you learned by just tattooing Greek statues, you know? Well, I can tell the difference between Poseidon and Zeus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone comes in, they're like, I want Zeus on me. I'm like, That's Poseidon. That's Poseidon. He's got a trident. Yeah, There's just, waves just, around just him. <laughs> dude, it's, it's, oh my God. Even stuff like that. I know someone that got a, a trident on their arm, but. Then he wanted to cover it up because it, it was like forks, which is like GD stuff. Oh, and it shit. was upside down. So basically, he's like telling them to fuck themselves. To fuck themselves. Wow. And <laughs> it's like all these things that have nothing to do with what you're trying to get your point across. Like at the gas station, you, you know, there's guys that own gas stations. And he, uh, he, had this, <laughs> he, he wanted to try it on his arm. But then he wanted to get rid of it because people were asking him about it. Sure. Because you know, there's, you know, people in the hood like, yo. What's, What's up? up? With yeah, and yeah. Just like I don't want this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Too many questions. <laughs> Yikes, dude! <coughs> that gas station's crazy, bro. I love it. I love the one right across the street. Yeah. I, anytime I work places, like I need excitement. And uh, I remember when I used to live upstairs, there was a there was a shooting at the gas station. There was like an argument, and that th- it's not like this anymore. You guys can still get tattooed, and <laughs> uh, so they're like arguing, and then these guys like dip off, and then they come back. They're like pop, pop, pop. And they miss they miss somebody and it ricocheted off the floor and it hit the guy who works there. Oh. So then he just see him crawling into the oh gas my station. God, and I'm, dude. Like, I'm like, this shit's fucked. Uh, <laughs> it's just, that is crazy. Even during the Holy riots, shit. even during the riots, dude. Like I, you know, I, I saw all the marching and everything, and then obviously I got to watch them burn down. And you're up high, right? Like you were looking down. At yeah, yeah. I got to see everything, dude. I got to see National Guard go in there. I was just worried that that fire wasn't going to spread to the gas station. I'm like, oh, they better oh. blow my windows open, bro. It's cold out here. Shit. And uh, no, it was summer. Um, it's hot out there. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it was weird. Like the PLS, because I'm like, I want to see where this is going to go. You know, a little bit of me. You know, you, you, you yeah. Kinda, hey, sometimes you want to see a car accident. You know, it is what it is. Oh, don't look at my Instagram feed. <laughs> it's all bad shit. So they start they start smashing through the the check cashing place, and I was like, oh shit. Now I'm like, are they going to get through the security glass? So they go over there. They're trying to break that open. They can't. They're like, man, fuck this shit. We're going to go over here and burn down the fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. Yeah, that'd be was, crazy to watch. That was crazy, man. Fucking Greg's got his shop over there, man. He had to, They had yep. to deal with that shit. So that's so shitty, man, that, that you, people have to deal with other people's shit. Yeah, it does I, make sense to me. I heard a story that uh, the piercer that they had at the time was living upstairs and he woke up in the middle of the night, looked out the window, and there's like a crowd there, and they're like. During the riots? Yeah, and he's like, hey man, they go get the fuck out of there. So he gets the fuck out of there, and they burn down a couple of those buildings. I guess somebody went upstairs to the camera shop that's next door, and they knocked on it, and they told this lady, like, you need to get the fuck out of here, like, this place is on fire. She gets out of there, and then she goes, oh shit, I forgot my kids. <laughs> so they, they go back up there and get kids. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, dude. During the riots, dude, like I had my TVs, my tablets, my phone on, everything. I'm watching the riots like at a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> got all the screens. I was like, oh shit, man. Oh my god. What's going dude. on in the Eastern Conference? Yeah, we lived like we lived in a house a little a little north of where everything went down off Sheridan mm-hmm. there. And I remember hearing like we, we were watching the live feed and all of a sudden we would hear you know, outside of our in the actual world, pop, pop. And then we see it and hear it on the fucking phone, pop, pop. We're like, holy shit, this is happening right outside of, you know, in our front yard, you know, that stuff was wild. It was, um, and that was COVID, you know, the riots, all that. And it was, I mean, it was the right uh, combinations of things that happen at one time. I think if we didn't have the lockdown, we wouldn't have the riots. Mm. I think people were bored. Uh, they needed Could something be. to do. It was something that brought people together. And, I mean, it's summer. Yeah, I mean, that lockdown, that affects you mentally in ways that we probably still don't even understand, right? Yeah, like, I know it got me. Mm. Lockdown got me, man. I, I, got, I got bad with drinking, and mm. uh, 
you know, shit like that. I um, actually started microdosing mushrooms during that time. And yeah. methodically, like, I don't know if you know who, like, Paul Stamets is, Mm-mm. or Paul Stamets. Some people say Stamets. I don't know. But he has, like, a few different methods of microdosing, like, very methodically measuring it and then increasing your dose to a point where you feel drowsy and then backing up that's your sweet spot, you know? Yeah. Um, I did it for, like, three months. I don't like mushrooms, man. They always hurt my stomach. Yeah, they suck. They don't taste good. But when you microdose, you don't, you don't get that. But my anxiety was totally down even my wife like yeah. when i told her i wanted to try this she w- i could tell she was super like skeptical she's like pretty much thinking like you're gonna take mushrooms and hang out with the kids like what <laughs> like no no you know so I, I i got her on board and and then after like a period of doing it she was like man i see a difference so yeah it's good works. it removes your ego yeah dude that's a thing that's a thing about about stuff like acid and mushrooms mm-hmm. is it removes your ego and it just kind of like brings you back down to earth and it's easier to like connect with things. It also eliminates worry of the past or future. It's like, you're there, you're mm-hmm. just right here. You know? I saw this I saw this one thing about like with acid and they were doing like CT scans to see how it works. And I, I guess what they found out about acid is like, usually all your senses have a job. Your, your ears hear, your eyes see, and they all do their own job. Well, when you, t- when you take acid, your senses are talking to each other that usually don't. That's why when you, you close your eyes, you can see, you can, oh, you know, you, that's cool. you start seeing stuff. That um, makes sense. You know, it's, it's, re- it's really crazy how your senses start, like, firing off to each other. They, did, C- sure, they did the CT scans, and they're like, this is your brain, not on drugs. And it's just, like, segregated. And then it's, like, on drugs, and you just see it, like, firing Bridging off the gaps. Oh, that's, that's cool. So cool. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me. It, you're right. You close your eyes when you're on acid. Your eyes aren't closed. The first the first time I did acid, I was with one of my guys. I think it was the first time he did it, too. And he's just sitting there like this. <laughs> and, and I'm like, you good, man? He's like, yeah, I'm going back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, dude. Yeah, I remember the first time I did acid. It was, it's, uh, I think... The, the worst part about trying a new drug mm-hmm. is waiting for it to kick in, not knowing what's going to happen, right? You're just like, okay, what's going to, you know, is that it? Is that, is that acid? No, that's just, no, I got to itch, you know, like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> that's, that's anxiety ridden, dude. I wanted to do acid forever, bro, because, like, I was really big into, like, I had this really big kick when I was, like, in middle school and high school um, about, like, the 70s, mm. you know? And so I was reading about like Charles Manson. I was I was into like the Mamas and the Papas and like really into that generation. I thought it was really cool. Is that why your son's name is Sylvester? Because that's like a '70s name, dude. It's an old school name. It's it's actually Sweet. Uh, I love it. It's uh, his great great grandfather's name. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like it. It's cool because like I thought about it this way. I was like, well, if I get it tattooed, it's got cool letters. <laughs> S's are dope. Yeah, it's got yeah. the D in there. The Y. E's. The Y. You know, it's weird that I thought about it like that, but yep. that's like how it went. I was like, that would be a cool tattoo. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, you know, and then I wanted a junior too, but, um, and like, I identify with Easy more than I do as Eric, you know, because sure. like, Eric, you know, I was born into that, but like, I created Easy yeah. and my stuff off that, you know, I'm not proud of everything about it, but you know, I get down and, uh, <laughs> Um, so I didn't want to make his first name easy because I wanted to give him a chance in life. <laughs> so, like, so I was like, we'll do it for a middle name. Middle name. Tuck it in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and even her sister was like, you should name it easy. And I, and like I, I was like, that's, that's cool. I appreciate you being on board, but like, I'm not no. going to do that to him. <laughs> You say it like if it was a girl, you can't you can't name it easy if it's a girl. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> Who's that easy bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh, oh, so so what's your uh what kind of tattoos do you do you mainly do? Uh I I guess I get kind of thrown into like the realism, black mm-hmm. and gray, you know, but I love I love color realism. I honestly man, I'm at this point where I my favorite tattoo is one cap of ink of black, just black. And then, you know, white, a little small cap of white, and then uh, like a three liner and like maybe a seven meg and then yeah. just go to town, dude. Like I, I, I feel like I can do any tattoo with that, with those four items, you know, I don't I lost, know. You lost me a three liner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three liner. Uh, I don't mind it, but I'm like, all right, seven mag. I'm with that. I was like three liner. Yeah. Three liner for no, sure. I got, I got, I got five rounds. I got my little thing too. I'm like a, 
a seven curve mag, seven round shader guy. I cool. feel like that's seven round shaders are nice. Yeah, yeah, it's I cool. do like them. I like five round shaders. Honestly, that's my go to for those. You know what's crazy is like when I first when I was first in the shop, um, and we were still like using needle bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. The guy, the guy that owned the shop, he he would he gave me a bunch of like his old stuff. He's like, here you can have these. And he gave me a shit ton of, of nine round shaders. Never used them, did you? Never used them. Never used them. I was like, that's when mags were still flat. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And <laughs> we're ordering from Cam. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes, Icon and Cam. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I would use them, and I, I got into them because I would use them for lettering, like thick, thick lining. And then I remember one time he kind of like got in my shit. He's like, why are you using that needle? You're going to tear up the skin. And then now, <laughs> like, Round shaders are like industry standard now. It's like gentle too. Like they're not, yeah. they don't really tear the skin up, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's weird how mentality shifted. Yeah, they are, especially in realism. Look at like Michael Perry and fucking, you know, Gonzo. All these guys are just using round shaders to, I mean, makes sense. They, they work, they get that texture. It's crazy, man, because like you're almost, man, it's almost like a fiend mentality to be able to sit there with your little mag mm -hmm. and just go at it. You know, like it's so weird. That's where headphones really come into play for me. Yeah. Like if I got a piece where it's like that, I, I don't know. I've heard. So we we did a, um, I worked New York last mm -hmm. year, and that's cool. Empire. Yeah, yeah. such a good one, yeah. dude. Oh my god, I I wanted to, I wanted to do it again this year. I don't think it's gonna happen. But anyways, did a, a seminar with Ralph Nonwheeler. Oh my god, bro. Have you seen his kid? Yeah, her. She's she's killing it. And I I thought that one thing that was really cool about what he did was he she was doing the little ants mm -hmm. she was doing those little tattoos of ants and she made all her art out of those ants yeah yeah so she got the ba the basics out of learning the fundamentals of tattooing to be able to do a clean tattoo and use use that and made art out of this little fucking thing that's so cool like, like she's sponsored by solon is she really yeah wow. cheyenne oh my god dude it's fucking ridiculous. when your dad's ridiculous. ralph non wheeler though you know, dude, he was showing us some of his first tattoos. He's like, I did tattoo uh, a Paul Booth flash and, you know, uh, it, uh, it's not, you know, not very good. And he goes, he, he puts it on the screen. Goes, there it is. That's my first tattoo. And he didn't know what he was doing. He was a cleaner in the tattoo shop and he just yeah. ended up doing this tattoo because the guy had to leave. So he's like, you do this tattoo. Dude, I think it blows every one of my tattoos out of the water. And it's his first fucking tattoo. I'm like, the, you're a mutant, you're a savant. Anyways, he was saying how um, headphones, he'll never wear headphones. He says it's so rude. And you treat you don't treat your client like that. He was very adamant, adamantly against it. So it's very European. Yeah, yeah. Because me, I'm like, my clients pay me a lot of money. And like, yes, yeah. I do like talking to them. Yeah. You know, I do, I do, I love that. We were just talking about like the people we meet. But at the same time, like when I'm this is my, my name goes on this fucking product I'm giving you. Like, I want to focus. Yeah. I want to make it my best. If music's going to do that in my ears, yeah. you know. I feel like the, if, they're, if their sleeve's badass, they're not going to be like, do you want to talk to me? He's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bitch, you were on speakerphone with your boyfriend in jail the whole time. <laughs> yeah, right. I hate that. I hate when people are on speakerphone. I hate oh, speakerphone man. now. <laughs> they're like, I can't hear you. I'm like, bitch, put it by your phone. Just That's put it, it in just there. Just put it by your ear, man. It's, yeah. it's put, mm, right? You're it's disrupting it. your environment. Yeah. <laughs> At least stop. Dude, uh, oh, man. The only thing, though, I, I will say is that because I like watching car accidents is I love the conversation sometimes because mm. it's like, all right, bitch, well, you fucking you let me you let everybody in here into this. Con this yeah, is, we're talking now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I was on this bus. I like taking the bus, man. I was taking a bus up. up to like around the, here? Huh? Around here? No, I don't take city bus. Well, I did in L.A., but like like traveling, going to other oh, places. Oh, sure. Yeah, because. You don't have to worry about like TSA and stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about the inconvenience, but you can just sit there and just like do things. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're going, up, I was going up to, uh, to see my family by Wausau and we, we stopped somewhere and the bus shop stops and then like people go to the gas station, take a little bathroom break and food and hop back on. So I'm sitting on the bus and there's like four or five people in there and there's this chick on her phone. And at first I'm annoyed. I'm like, come on, dude. Like speak your phone. Yeah. Yeah. And at first, I'm like, come on, dude, really? And then she goes, girl, I'm trying to get an apartment right now, but, you know, it's real hard when you got felonies. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so she goes, girl, what'd you do? She goes, man, you know, domestic and arson and... <laughs> oh, my God, dude, <laughs> just airing dude, it out. The bus is so quiet. <laughs> like, you know, everyone's like... 
<laughs> She's got no shame, man. And then as soon as the bus starts and you can't really hear her anymore, like people start talking. <laughs> You're like, man, you know this motherfucker. That's so funny, I like dude. <laughs> I love it. I'd be doing the same thing, listening on that. Ooh, okay, what else you got, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Do you got back pain and stuff with tattooing? Um, so I get like, yeah, like, like up here, my, it's always my right arm. And in yeah. fact, last night, uh, you know, I was, I was doing that too. I was like, I notice that when I tattoo, like my shoulder sits forward and this one sits back and I'm just like, yeah, I got to figure that out. A man. lot of my stuff's like lower back pain. And then sometimes I feel like I'll get like tennis elbow from stretching. Oh, yeah. And I don't know. It's weird. I'm trying to figure it out. Just eating better. Like I've been eating better. I like meal prep 90% of my meals and stuff like that. And uh, I've been like trying to like work out and stuff. Same. Yeah. The last that month, helps. dude, it, that that's it. I think that is the answer. And it's like the, the last month I, I haven't, I've worked out today. This morning was the second time in a month. Mm -hmm. I just completely fell off. Uh, before that I was steady and like, I didn't have that pain. Yeah. You know, that doing stuff. Fucking rough, man. Just keeping conscious of your posture, like that's it's hard to it's do. It's hard, dude. Especially when you're like working for everything. Like I'm just ready to go home, man. Yeah. Let's just wrap this up. Let's go through. You know, what I like to do is I like to set my client up, like like I'll, I'll you know we're sitting down most of the time, but like sometimes I like to set them up so I can stand. Standing, standing like is good. Standing. Power stands. Yeah. Oh, dude, right? <laughs> like I'm playing a fucking metal yeah. song. Yeah. Spread the legs and dude, just so get down there. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool. Um, how can people set up an appointment with you? Uh, good luck. <laughs> I don't. I'm bad with messages. Fucking no. losers! You're not getting cool tattoos now, dude. I am like, uh, I, I say email. Email is the best way. Um, Javon Tattoo at Gmail dot com. Um, give me, give me a week, and if you don't hear from me, then just keep bugging me because I will get back to you yeah. if you bug me. Sometimes people take it personal. They're oh, like, they hey, do. bro. You know what? I was gonna wrap this up, but now like, no, not let's talk I about got, that. Got, yeah, we got, you guys need. <laughs> I'm to, You guys need to fucking understand something. <laughs> Hope you made it. Hopefully, you made it this far, right? Like, I have a life. <laughs> Motherfucker will message you at one thirty in the morning. Question marks. Come on, dude. Dude. I know. The fuck, man. Like, sometimes like people they just they don't see you as being a fucking human. That's the thing with social media is now like people think that because you can get a hold of somebody way over there in an instant yep. that they think that they're owed it back. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Let's get this straight too. I'm a tattoo artist. I'm a receptionist. I'm an accountant. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a f own four dogs. Like we wear many hats as tattoo artists. It's yeah. not just we're there tattooing. We have to yeah. do the scheduling. We have to do the uh, taxes. We have to do it all ourselves. Could you like, send me a picture of my design for next month? <laughs> I, Dude, I don't send. I don't send anything. I don't do any designs ahead of time. No, lately I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a, the right way to do things because I. I like to be fresh. Yeah, I like to, to be fresh with it. I like to collaborate with my client. Honestly, yeah. I like to get them there face to face. Because for one, when you're spending eight to ten hours at the studio and then you go home and you got a family now, you get it. Like you don't have two hours to spend on a drawing oh, along with even everything if else. I did, I'm not gonna spend it on that. Exactly, dude. Exactly. I got I got this client. He's an awesome fucking guy. We're doing a really cool sleeve on him, and uh, he, he's such a nice guy that he just stopped by the shop and he was like, I was in the neighborhood, and he was like, How, how are things going with you, man? I, that was really cool. But uh, mm. he goes. Uh, did you, did you do my design yet? I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad, but I'm like, that's the answer. It is an honest I'm answer. Like, no, <laughs> you know his appointment. You know his appointment's coming up on on the first, but sure, it'll be ready. It'll be we're ready. Gonna, we're gonna kill it. Hell yeah. Um, you on uh, you on Instagram? Instagram Javon Tattoo. Yep. Um, I have a TikTok. It's got some posts on there, but I never. I gotta. I'm gonna start keeping up with things now. Um, I kind of made a, a pact with myself that now is you know. Like we talked about earlier, got to play the game. Yeah, and social media is part of that. So uh, I feel bad I didn't bring this up. What's your What's your band name? So right now we uh, we got six songs that we we've been recording and we don't have a name yet. We're uh, open for suggestions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you got any ideas, email Javon Tattoo. Um, yeah, no, I I don't know. We don't have a name yet, but we'll get there. You and got You got any music online? Not yet. Not yet. No, we're waiting. Ooh. We uh. We're actually looking for possibly a vocalist because we're instrumental right now, and I kind of think there's a lot of potential for good vocals. So, um, yeah, we're gonna it's gonna hit hard when it does because we're just gonna throw everything out there, we start playing shows right away, and then you know go from there. That's awesome, bro. Let me know. I'm definitely gonna want to go to that for sure. 
Um, dude, I really appreciate you doing this. Same, this is man. the first one. Um, hopefully we can do more of these and everything, man. I, w I wish you the best of luck with your band, your yeah. family, and um, business in general, man. Oh, so. You too, man. A mutual feeling. Thank awesome. you so much, Thank man. Thank you so much, bro.